All right, so last week we touched upon what famous Adventist pioneer? What's that? You, oh, come on. Okay, you know there's going to be a quiz every week. Goodlow Bell. Goodlow Bell. And we talked about um, a little bit about him. His family came from New England area in New York. They moved to Michigan. He taught throughout the state of Michigan. But this week, I just want to touch a little bit about his conversion, because I find I found that fascinating. And good little bell. Um, remember, we talked last um, Sabbath as well that his wife uh, passed away in uh, February 1866. Well, 1866 was the year that our uh, Western Health Reform Institute opened in Battle Creek. And so Goodlow Bell, not only um, was he a man who worked a lot, he really didn't know a lot about health because he overworked himself and got himself sick, but also with the loss of his, his dear wife, Catherine, um, his health kind of deteriorated as well. And so he shows up at our Western Health Institute in Battle Creek in 1866. He also comes back in 1867 as well. And as he comes here, or as he goes to this health institute, two days before Thanksgiving, um, it says patients met Patients and helpers met together to plan for their Thanksgiving dinner and appointed, appointed two men as committee, a committee on the proceedings on which um, our good little bell was a part of. The dinner was fittingly described as one that the worst dyspeptics might partake of. Unleavened biscuits, hygienic cake, luscious fruit and a variety of vegetables. No condiments were provided, but it was spiced a little with good humor, pleasantry, and with a rich and wholesome cheer and seasoned with a good appetite. And so you think about like people who had stomach issues back then, and we gotta remember people that have stomach issues today, uh, they, the unleavened, the, the baking soda and stuff that were in some of these foods were detrimental to one's uh, health of the stomach. And it goes on to say that the program that evening um, included trades, poetry, and a lot of singing. There are six toasts that were made to the doctors. There was a Dr. Lay, this place at the time only had two doctors working, a Dr. Lay and a Dr. Byington. Um, and Bell, good little Bell, gives a couple speeches um, to these doctors with a stay there. The first one, Dr. Lay, he tries to be a little clever in his speech. And he starts off saying, Dr. Lay, we are glad he has, found, he has been led to lay off all allegiance to drugs and to lay hold of the health reform. May God give him strength and wisdom and lay successfully the foundation of one of the greatest and best institutions in our land. And although he may never meet his just recompense here, may be so happy as to lay up treasure in heaven and at last wear a bright and starry crown. And then to Dr. Byington, he says, a man who will stand by the truth, let him come what will, and will stand by you in the hour of trial and sorrow. May he ever be one who shall live by faith and finally enter by the gate into the city. So we see he's, good little Bell is not a Seventh-day Adventist. He has some Christian um, um, backing in the past, his life, but he's not, he hasn't come into the faith really yet. However, he's at our institute and he's influenced by another patient. And this patient, I don't know the patient's first name, it says this S. Osborne, 
um, and I think he's from Kentucky area that came up to Battle Creek. And this is Goodlow Bell's roommate. And this person, this S. Osborne, was a very devoted, sincere Seventh-day Adventist. And he shared a room with Goodlow Bell, as Bell was wary of the Adventist faith, but could not fail to be impressed by Osborne's zeal and a concern on his behalf. Bell sometimes would awake during the night and he would hear his roommate, Osborne, S. Osborne, praying for Good Little Bell. Can you imagine waking up and hearing your roommate praying for you? The influence of Osborne together with the impact of the Health Institute program and personal imp impressed him. Also, Good Little Bell was an avid reader and he began to study the teachings of the church after he became acquainted, with a minister, became acquainted with the minister who conducted the Sabbath services, he also attended the meetings of the church. So not only this time in 1867 when he came here restored his health, but it brought upon a renewal of his soul and a newfound faith, love of this newfound faith. And I think about this here this Health Institute starts up in 1866. And so God uses the right arm of the message, the health message. He also brings in S. Osborne, this personal contact of someone who's living the Adventist faith. And then this pastor he meets gives Goodlow Bell books to read. So all these three avenues God used to reach Goodlow Bell into our Adventist message. And because of these three avenues, with the work of the Holy Spirit, Good Little Bell becomes an Adventist, and we talked about in the past, he's our first teacher um, at our school in Battle Creek. And so what does it mean for us? Because some of us, especially this time, we, we think Christmas, people are open to the gospel, but there's so many different avenues that you and I could use some of us could use the health message to reach someone who's sick. Some of us, by our, our Christian example and our faithfulness to, um, to Christ, is another witness to the gospel message. And then lastly, books. And you know that I'm a lovely lover of books, and Bob's a lover of books, and just love giving books out. Sometimes you don't know what to say. Give a book, especially this time of year. Give a book to someone as a Christmas present with our message. You don't even have to say, say, hey, this has been a blessing to me. I hope it will be a blessing to you, or I know it will be a blessing to you. And let that, bur that book, through the work of the Holy Spirit, do its wonders. So I, I was just impressed how, how the Lord used these three avenues to reach Good Little Bell. Um, and just by this one man, how it built up our, our school system and, and brought the message to our youth at this time. 